Hey there, kids, and welcome to Cooking with Teching, filmed on location at the luxurious kitchen set I just built for the purposes of this sketch. I'm going to tear all this down right after this is over. All right, so for today's video, we will be making an egg, but not just an egg. This is in honor of the glorious admiral-turned-pirate, the man mountain himself, Admiral Orlumbus, the seventh member of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, and the last uh, member of the uh, discussion series we're going to be doing today, and it's been such a ride hasn't it? But yes, Orlumbus is a man that loves timing, okay? He's the kind of guy that lives his life very methodically. He rises from his bed at 6 a.m. every morning, has a nice hearty breakfast at 8 o'clock sharp, you know, cares for his ships, the Yonta Maria fleet, and if breakfast, lunch, or dinner are served just one minute out of sync, oh, that just makes him piss. He just flips the table. It's like, oh, no dinner for everybody! So while we're waiting for the water to finish boiling, you might be interested in my fabulous apron here. Uh, you know, I'm very patriotic all of a sudden. No, uh, I actually made this myself, like with my own two hands. I made this in eighth grade in Miss Emler's uh, home economics class, and that was actually the same year I won the home economics award. That's right, you know, you know, I'm serious. But yeah, I'm very patriotic, I know. Also, that reminds me, while I was at Walmart today, you know, uh, picking up the eggs to do this video, I was in the maple syrup aisle, and I discovered something rather interesting about the brands of maple syrup. Yeah, it, it turns out, like, Nux and Anime Uproar and Retro Rhino, they've all achieved the highest status that you can get in Canada, which is being the spokesperson for a certain brand of maple syrup. You know, they are the best celebrities in the entire country. Who knew? Honestly, I can't think of anyone else more famous than those three from Canada. I don't even know who the Prime Minister of Canada Does Canada have Prime Ministers? They have a King. The King of Canada! If they don't have a King of Canada, there needs to be a King of Canada. Okay. Well, uh, is the water boiling yet? Oh, it's a bubbling. It's a bubbling. Yeah, we're about there. Alright, so this is where the fun part starts. I'm actually going to first uh, get my serious rabbit ears on because we're talking Easter here. Kitchen timer! I'm going to add a little bit of salt just because. You know, get the salt to taste in there. All right, got that. Now, try not to burn yourself when you do this, and also try to prep the timer beforehand, because you want that timer to go as soon as this egg hits the water. So I'm going to set it for 12 minutes exactly. So here we start. Okay. This is going to be a very important video. I'm doing something I've never done before. This video has to be timed perfectly, all for the sake of our savior, Orlumbus. This video will be exactly 23 minutes long and zero seconds if it kills me. I'm wearing enough watches, so I think I'll be good. I even had to go back and factor in the intro, because I was filming it in the kitchen, so I had to change that and add all that up and subtract it to that. So I only got about 17 minutes to screw around here, okay? So let's, let's do this. All right, so this will be the seventh member of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, Admiral Orlumbus. And he strikes a rather imposing figure, doesn't he? He's not quite as large as Hyrudi. You know, once you have a giant on your freaking crew, at that point, everybody else, no matter how large and broad of shoulder they may be, not really as impressive as the legit giant, but Orlumbus is still a rather uh, buff fellow. You don't want to run into him. He, uh, his biggest feat in the Colosseum is he basically took out a lion with his bare hands. The only other person I know of that could have done that is Heracles, and he didn't even have to bullshit around with all the trials and everything. Orlumbus just got right to it, right? So, yeah. Now, here's the thing. Orlumbus is not a pirate, or at least he didn't start out as a pirate. He was in the uh, kind of career opportunity that we hear about every now and then in the One Piece world, but we don't really get a lot of examples of. Usually it's, you're a pirate, or you're a marine, or you're a revolutionary, or you're just a regular civilian, okay? But in the case of Orlumbus, as well as with Mont Blanc Noland, he was an adventurer. So you know what that means. It's a little bit more of an eloquent kind of title, you know. Um, you're basically tasked by a country, in the case with Orlumbus, it was the Standing Kingdom, to take a fleet of ships and just basically, I think, just travel the world, discover unknown lands. Uh, certainly in the One Piece world, there are plenty of islands that have yet to be discovered, uninhabited areas, especially in the Grand Line. So the, uh, the call to adventure is much more prevalent in this world rather than ours, you know, where we have, like, satellites and things. And it's like, we want to see if there's an island over here in the South Pacific at these exact coordinates. I'm like, okay, click, 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 Google Maps, there you go. No, nope, there's no island there. Sorry, don't know what to tell you. Unless, unless the government doesn't want you to know there's an island there or something. Um, 
But anyway, uh, actually, that reminds me of the island that's off the coast of Africa. I think it's Bouvé Island. It's this place. It's like one of the hardest places in the entire world to get to. And at some point, there was a people that went there. It's not impossible to get to. It's just it's really hard to. And there's nothing on the island, so there's no reason to go there. But these people found this uh, lifeboat just on the island, just randomly. It's like this is one of the hardest places in the world to get to. And we found a wooden lifeboat on the island. We have no idea who it belongs to. One of the mysteries of the world. But anyway, I'm getting off topic there. So the king of the standing kingdom tasks Orlumbus and his fateful first mate, Columbus. <laughs> see see what Oda did there? I originally thought like, oh, Orlumbus, the adventurer. I get it. He's just playing off of Columbus from our world, Christopher Columbus. But no, no, there's actually a legit character in One Piece just named Columbus. And she's not really all that important, so don't expect her to do anything really relevant. But uh, yeah, I don't know if she is Orlumbus's daughter or like niece or somebody but yeah she's a lot younger than him but she seems to have quite a bit of authority on the ship actually we don't even know if she is um like the legit first mate but she seems to be you know so we'll just roll with that i guess anyway orlumbus commands the yonta maria fleet which is the largest fleet out of the entire grand fleet itself i think there's something like five thousand men that are under orlumbus's employ okay so he has a lot of freaking manpower now granted most of the men that work under orlumbus are just like the regular scallywags you know there it's not like orlumbus has like a crack team of devil fruit users and hockey users and all that crap but still i mean just in terms of manpower and the way that he uses them pretty efficient you know he's the kind of guy it's unlike don creed don creed had a really large fighting force as well but you could see like he was much more of a rough kind of commander and everything like that and you know even the fact that you know he didn't bring i guess uh proper preparations when he was going into the grand line then you know that was not the only reason he got destroyed it was also because he picked off Mihawk, but you could tell when Krieg made that expe expedition into the Grand Line, he wasn't really planning for everything. He didn't expect what it was going to be. Orlumbus is the kind of guy that plans out everything. He's very methodical with that. In fact, his entire cover story that we got uh, in, the, in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet serial was basically... Like, it was the longest one, and yet it was kind of the weirdest one. All right, it was just like, Lord Orlumbus, you know, Admiral Olumbus wakes up at 6 a.m. in the morning. All right, Oda, that's good to know <laughs> that we know his habit. We know what day of the day, what time of the day Orlumbus wakes up every morning. That's lovely. And then at, at 10 a.m., he inspects the ship for dust. All right, are, are we going to do something cool at some point? And he does. Um, the cover serial also chronicles how he decides to resign as an adventurer and, you know, go and, uh, you know, become a legit pirate with his fleet. And it, it's revealed that the Standing Kingdom, that was technically their fleet, their navy. They basically just tasked Orlumbus with the responsibility to command their navy to go to various islands, probably to seek out resources, uh, extend their kingdom, things like that. And he's referred to as the Great Adventurer, so I'm I'm sure he's had plenty of success before. I'm sure he's not just some upstart adventurer that comes back and is like, well, I haven't found anything yet, but maybe someday. And the king is like, ooh, I love adventurers so much. Okay, take as many ships as you need and all the provisions. I don't care. Now, there is a matter of dispute, though, involving his title because he calls himself the trailblazing adventurer, but other people call him the made-up adventurer or the fake adventurer. And yet, then he has another epithet altogether, a third one that's the massacre ruler. So you tell me where that one fits in. Oh, he's a real explorer. No, he's not. A, he's a fake explorer. Oh, he's by the way, he's a massacre ruler. Like, all right. But anyway, yeah. So what I think this is, is that some of the stuff that Orlumbus does is real. I think you, you don't get a massive fleet, you know, for nothing. You have to yield some results, but I think he also exaggerates his stories a little bit. You know, Orlumbus might be the kind of guy, like, he comes back to the Standing Kingdom after an expedition, and he's like, Ah, King! Yes, I have returned! I am the trailblazing adventurer Orlumbus! And he, like, presents the king with all of this silver and gold and stuff he found on the expedition, but he's like, Ah, you know, sadly, King, there was but 50 tons more of this silver. I could only acquire this much and the king is like oh that's still plenty of silver we should go back and get some more i'm like oh actually um the island sunk into the ocean after i left it was a truly tragic thing marvelous sight to behold unfortunately we can get no more silver from that oh well maybe we could dive down and get oh actually then a volcanic uh, eruption occurred and uh all the metal and, and gold and everything got got melted so we definitely can't go back to that 
place. <laughs> and and a dragon is there too now, so we can't go there. You know, like, he might be doing something like that. Like, he, he does yield things from his expeditions, but he, like, you know, exaggerates the story like he had a way more exciting time. Like, I also slayed a massive griffin while I was out at sea. You know, so that that's probably the kind of stuff. But it seems like he actually was pretty useful to the standing kingdom. He probably discovered plenty of islands that continued on their reign, and the king was happy, and the people of the island were happy, and the people of his fleet were happy, so everything was good. And then all of a sudden, he comes back from Dressrosa one day, and he announces his resignation, like, I'm done working for the standing kingdom, I'm done being an adventurer, I'm gonna be a pirate. By the way, I'm taking the fleet. See ya! And he sails off into the distance with a tear in his eye as the king is pissed off and launching cannonballs from the shore, like, SINK OUR SHIPS! Make sure he doesn't get- Da! Ah! You know, can you imagine that guy though? Imagine like this dude or Lumbus, he did so much for the Standing Kingdom, he was probably their national hero, if anything. And then all of a sudden he just like, yeah, I'm done with that. You know, I uh I allied with this uh kid with a straw hat at Dress Rosa because he saved everybody from a giant bird cage and he's pretty cool, so uh I'm gonna go be a pirate too. You know, you figure the king would be like pissed off anyway, he'd be like, oh fine, just leave. And then he just, okay, and then he just takes the whole fleet. He's like, no, no, you're not allowed to take the fleet. You can take one ship. If you want to go and be a pirate, go and be a pirate, but you don't take the entire... Screw it. So, the Standing Kingdom, if you actually think about that, they're kind of in a in a hard way right about now, because they could seriously uh, get invaded with no standing military. You get what I mean? Yeah, so anyway. Uh, but Orlumbus begins his days as a pirate, and he starts drafting up, like, oh, this is the pirate code and everything. You could tell this is somebody that's like, you know, being a pirate kind of lends a little bit of just, like, uh, ambiguity to it. Like, you, you're not sure what's going to happen day after day, because you're now a pirate and you're a wanted criminal. But with Columbus, he's gonna make it as like bureaucratic as possible I guess he's gonna keep notes on everything like this is my uh, this is my codex to being a great pirate pass this out to all of the crew they shall memorize this by tomorrow morning you know that's the kind of guy he is right um, so he starts to sail off and he finds this island from a distance and he's like oh oh this is our first uh, decree we're, we're pirates now there's an island we shall raid said island so they begin attacking the island but Pontiff actually arriving there and docking, I'm sure Orlumbus is like, Okay men, Formation 3, as stated in the Codex of Pirates, we shall raid the island in a calm and orderly manner. Cutlass is out. And so they attack the island, but then they realize the place they raided was a very poor country, probably a place that's not allied with the world government, so a pretty poor area. All their buildings are in shambles and are like, you know, barely holding together. And so Orlumbus felt bad for it. He's like, oh... I apologize. I um, uh, this is my first day. <laughs> this is my first day being a pirate. I came across this island, and uh, you know, I, I thought I was supposed to attack. I thought that was in the code. We're supposed to attack every island we come across. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm new to this. Tell you what, let me let me give you some food. So he's a nice guy, you know. I I feel like there's some natural elements of comedy that are just gonna come about from this, you know. Or Lumbus try to does his his piratey deeds, but he ends up feeling bad for the people he attacks because he's not really a pirate at heart, you know. Like, maybe he'll get in his, like, oh, the Marines are attacking. Oh, this is the, uh, the famous scene where we fight back against the Navy. And so they start attacking the Navy, but then maybe the Navy's like, oh, no, our ship is destroyed. The world government's going to be mad at us. and be like, oh, that's right. They have to pay for their vessels. Oh, I don't feel good about this. Guys, 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 call off the attack. You know, we don't want their paycheck to be in, in jeopardy at all. You know, we don't want that poor man, that ensign, to be disbarred from the Marines for this. Disbarred from the Marines. Being a Marine is a lawyer now, I guess. Whatever. So he's like, let's let's help them rebuild their ships. <laughs> so I can see that kind of crap happening. So, you know, I, I think most certainly the, the like the the sheer size of his fleet. And by the way, his fleet is divided much like how Columbus's fleet was divided into three ships. Uh, his is divided into three different types of ships. You got the Yonta Maria, which is the flagship, and then you got the Santa Maria, and then you got the Nita Maria, which are all like you know Ni San Yo. So you know like two, three, four in Japanese. So yeah, he has like all these different ships, and of course the Yonta is the largest. It's like a galleon, and then you got the Santas that are like 
slightly smaller, and then the, you know, the Nita, they're, they're the smallest out of all of his uh, ships. But he has plenty of ships and plenty of men. All right, so this is definitely going to come in handy later on, whatever big event is going to occur involving the Grand Fleet. You know, whenever Orlumbus rolls up, he's going to have the massive forces that are going to kind of thin the herd. He's going to have, like, his his random riffraff are going to fight against all the random marine riffraff or all the random pirate riffraff. You know, they're the ones that are going to go up. So you don't have to worry about the Straw Hats brawling with a bunch of random people. You know, when it's like, it's the final battle with the admirals, right? And the three admirals, they roll up on their ships and, and a Kainu is there with them and they got all these marine soldiers. It's like Orlumbus's crew is mostly going to handle the marine soldiers. Meanwhile, the Grand Fleet members like Cavendish and Bartolomeo and Orlumbus, they're going to take like the vice admirals and the captains, like the higher ranked members. And then it's going to be the Straw Hats against the Marines and then like Luffy against Sakazuki. Something like that. Not saying like an event like that is actually going to occur, but it would be something like that, you know? All right, now... Something else, uh, whenever you uh, are deciding on the size of pot to bring to a boil, uh, you just want to make sure that the egg is completely submerged in the water. That might sound obvious, um, but you must also be wondering why I'm using such a large pot when I'm only hard-boiling a single egg. Well, that's the reason. I just want to make really sure that it's below. I, I also have a few saucepans and things I could be using right now, but... Um, yeah, now you just basically sit back and uh, keep an eye on that timer because as soon as this thing goes off, you need to pull that egg out and uh, then you can uh, crack it or peel the uh, eggshell away. It should crack rather easily after being in boiling water for that long. And um, yeah, after that, you, uh, you should be good. You should have some tasty meal on your hands. As for Massacre Ruler, that might just maybe come from his, uh, maybe he has a temperament. He's somebody that really cares more about, like, the timing of things. You have to make sure to get everything exact. Um, allow S-Voice to access your microphone. No, I don't want that. Um... But it's like, you know, if, if you piss him off, he's like, if you serve dinner at the wrong time, he's like, THIS IS RIDICULOUS! BOOM! And then bashes one of his freaking crewmates' heads against the wall of the ship. And we've seen this with his techniques. He has a certain number of techniques, all with Admiral in the title. Like, Admiral Hug, so he takes, you know, two guys, and he's like, BOOM! And smashes them together like a symbol. So that'll do some damage. And then he has his Admiral Killer Bowling, which he uses uh, with in, conjunct in conjunction with Zoro. See, Zoro had to figure out a way to get all the way over to Pika, who was on the other side of the island, basically, on the other side of the city of Dressrosa. And so he goes over to Orlumbus, and he's like, Hey, man, seeing you throw people around, I was wondering if you could throw me at that giant mountain man over there. Not, not a mountain man, like the literal man that is a mountain. He's like... Well, yes, uh, Pirate Hunter, I could do that, but this isn't exactly the technique that's uh, meant to be throwing people safely now. It's like, ah, don't worry, I can handle it. And so, he's like, all right, you better you know, you know, cinch up your apple sack, boy. Grabs Zoro, and he's like, they tighten in, and he's like, Admiral Killer Bowling! And then just rockets Zoro straight toward Pika. And you could tell, like, it, it is a pretty intense technique, you know, because Zoro's like... He got thrown pretty damn fast, but Zoro's pretty tough, so he was able to compose himself to do the Ichidai Sunsen Dai Sensekai in conjunction. That is actually a combination attack with Orlumbus. Yes, indeed it is. If Orlumbus wasn't there, Zoro would have never succeeded. Factual information right there. He also has sort of like a gag technique called Admiral Tin Hut. And so what he does is, this is actually kind of funny, he has such an imposing figure, and he's wearing, like, the admiral outfit and everything, he looks like a rather professional dude you don't want to mess with, he looks like a commanding officer, I could see Orlumbus swap out the outfit, I could see him as, like, a vice admiral, I mean, he's, he fits the description, right? And so, it's like he's fighting a member of, like, the Doflamingo family, or the Marines, or whatever, and then out of nowhere in the middle of the fight, he'll just be like, TEN HUT, MAN! And they have no, like, just the boomingness of his voice and the commanding of his presence. They're like, yes, sir! What the hell are we doing? <laughs> He's like, well, well yes, sir. Like, it's just a reflex. They have to do it. They have to stand at attention. And then that's when Orlumbus beats the crap out of them or attacks them with his whip. He usually carries a whip as his main weapon. So, uh, yeah, very, uh, very impressive dude. Do not want to mess with him. As for his exploits on the battlefield of Dressrosa, though, not really much to say about that. He kind of got the crap beat out of him by Vlau G. And like I said in the Coliseum, the most impressive thing he did, we took out a lion, which is an impressive feat, I'm just saying. But despite that, everything else, he he and Ideo were kind of the ones that were a little bit more pushed to the side. Um, although Ideo had that cool moment that I forgot to mention in his video where he's like, you know, even if I'm defeated, someone else will defeat you. You know, at least I'm, I'm weakening you. I'm fighting you to, like, some effect, right? Um, you know, meanwhile, 
meanwhile, you have Orlumbus, who was trying to, like, attack, but, you know, just everyone was, like, either... He fought against a lot of the martial artists, like Lao Chi and everybody, so they're just faster and more adept at, at fighting than Orlumbus is. Orlumbus' attacks are mainly focused on just overwhelming his opponent with his brute strength, or, like, just grabbing them and crushing them or attacking them with his whip. That's pretty much all Orlumbus himself has got for him. I don't think he knows hockey. Uh, he certainly doesn't have a devil fruit or anything, but but who knows? You know, his, his fleet, I guess, is definitely going to come in more handy than probably the man or Lumbus himself, but we stay at attention! I'm probably doing this wrong. I apologize to anybody in the military. Actually, in the One Piece world, the way they, uh, the Marines salute is they do this, and the reason they have the handout like this, I actually have a friend in the Navy, and I talked to him about this, but the reason they do this, I guess, in the One Piece world is because when you're handling a ship, especially with one back in the day, like a sailing vessel, and you gotta handle ropes and everything, your hands are usually gonna be dyed a black color all the time. You know, you can't just go and take some hand sanitizer and wipe it off or whatever. So back in the day, that was kind of disrespectful to, like, salute and then, like, have you know, this part of your hand facing your commanding officer. So that's why you'll see, like, Kobe saluting like this. So the back of his hand is completely focused. Although, my friend in the Navy did also tell me, like, that stereotypical saluting, the kind you see on television, like, you know, salute like this, that's not a thing. That's not how you do it in the actual military. But uh, it's not quite like this either. So whatever you're going to do. But that's the reason that Oda came up with in the One Piece world anyway. Haha, -ha. and as it happened, I knew this was going to occur. I, I was a little bit short. But I am, like I said... Dedicated. 23 minutes exactly, so we have a little bit of time to kill, which is okay, because I didn't really do a proper outro for this video anyway. Okay, so a few more things about Orlumbus. Uh, first off, he seems to have been in at least a few battles before, okay? Not just the fact that he has, like, attacks and stuff ready to go, like Admiral Hug or Admiral Killer Bowling, okay? So, you might consider him like he's a fake adventurer, but he's definitely seen some shit. You know, he's definitely been in battle before. He has a big scar across his freaking chest. Um... I don't know if that means, like, he's pretending to be an adventurer for the Standing Kingdom when in reality he really was, like, an outlaw and those fights from, like, were, like, from the Marines or the world government. I don't think that's the case, though. I really think it just comes down to him, like, oh, yeah, I did this big epic adventure and I also slew a, a Leviathan along the way. Kind of more stuff like that where people just are kind of a little bit more than dubious. Um, let's see. We have a little bit of time left. Uh, we can talk about Columbus because I'm interested in, like, exactly what the deal with that is. I'm, I'm not gonna bring up how it is a little weird that Columbus is, like, a little girl that's on this crew of mostly large buff men. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Columbus has a thing for lollies. I don't know. But, um, hey, you never know. She might turn out to be, like, a serious badass. Apparently all the crew are afraid of her. So, you know, it might, like, come down to the final battle at Raftal and then Columbus is actually, like, afraid of her. Like, she busts out, like, a giant bazooka and starts fighting against everybody so watch her you never know what's gonna happen and we're almost done so i'm just gonna make some funny noises with my mouth like bingle bongle dingle dangle yickety do yickety da ping pong we're good crap 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 kids uh this is why uh this is why you always got to pay attention to the timing because i don't know what's going to happen next with this egg but i can tell you what's going to happen to me tonight i am going to get whipped by orlumbus for sure so i got to go hide this to make sure he doesn't see Tacky! no where is my egg <laughs>